We are pushing right ahead in this Adobe section, and we just posted exercise one, and that was our cartoon jumble, right? So if I really want to clean up my files before moving to the next exercise, I'm going to move all my assets file into, into one folder. And these are all the black and white line art ones I used for exercise one, and then some of the color options I used. And then these are really important. My online file types, the JPEG, open in preview there, of both color and black and white. Notice that that has white pixels filling in the empty space, but also the PSD. And the PSD is marked green because this is my working file. So if I ever want to go back, make changes, make edits, I'll show you one example. If I turn off the background, and if I play with image adjustments, like levels, I can adjust this color to be a little bit darker and more contrasted. Or I can use image adjustments and shift this color to be a totally different hue, a different part of the, the color spectrum like that. And then instead of saving it as a JPEG, I want it to be a free floating kind of sticker, like a tattoo image, right? And then I'll put it onto a photo of my bare back and then just go to my tattoo parlor and say, fill it up. If I want to do that, I say file, save a copy, but this time I'm going to use a different format, which is PNG. PNG is also an online file format. But it is a file format that's different than JPEG, and you'll see why. Because JPEG will fill up empty space with white, the PNG will leave that empty space open. So that it can be any background you put that on. In this case, it will be just middle gray. Right? Also, if I ever want to change the colors of a project after the fact, I can use preview just for little quick adjustments, right? I get levels there, and I also get saturation adjustments, and a lot of these kind of uh, color and brightness contrast options, we can tweak a little bit in preview sometimes, just for online files, until we get to a project we really like, right? All right, now we're gonna use these same principles go in our folder and create a new folder, which is for exercise two. Exercise two is going to look very different because now that we've had our introduction to compositing, we want to do an introduction to vectors. So unit three introduces us to vector shapes. And if you remember from our, our introduction, intro to digital art, those slides, Compositing is pixel-based. Vectors are vector-based. They're based on paths, no square pixels. But instead of having to use Adobe Illustrator right now, which is, is tricky in its own right, we're going to get introduced to vector shapes within a raster program, within Adobe Photoshop. And we could do this in PhotoP as well, and it's it's step-by-step -step demonstrated that way. But I'm going to demo it in Photoshop. I encourage you to use Photoshop in the classroom. And then as long as you save it as a PSD document, you can continue that in PhotoP on any browser, right? We did a cartoon jumble for the last theme. This theme, we are doing a band book theme. And what you're going to do is make your own custom emoji. Emojis are vector shapes, which means they are infinitely scalable. Here are some examples. The reason we do a banned book theme is because it is difficult <laughs> to make an emoji that's not like one we've already seen. So we want some kind of unique inspiration. So this is inspired by the orcs in Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is on the banned books list every year because of its use of, of, uh, of weed, basically. Weed and magic and devils people have problems with. This one is from... Oh, that one where they're stranded on an island of the Lord of the Flies, right? And the, the kids kill each other. All right. Sacrifice a pig. Okay, so 
We go right to the project. This is the only thing we're doing in this unit. The first thing to do is to understand what an emoji is. Raise your hand if you don't know what an emoji is. All right. Emojis are everywhere, and they're designed the same way that typefaces are designed, which is as vector shapes. So they can be used in a variety of places. And they can be used really big, really small, and they're always pretty readable. So this is kind of graphics design. Not about line quality at all, but about kind of bold shapes. First of all, we need to download, let's use this little arrow next to it, uh, this list of banned books. These are currently in our NLC library. Banned just means that they're routinely challenged. So all public institutions have to argue to keep these books in their collection. And they include things like the Bible, like Harry Potter, And maybe they include some of your favorite books. Like I love A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. So if there's a book, which might be an interesting one to do. So if there's a book you're interested in doing, even if you haven't read it, you might research it. And books are sold with little taglines. Like just little descriptors. Whether it's on their Amazon page, whether it's on their Wikipedia page whether it's a summary. Um, and if you look for why it's banned, you can always look up banned reason. You'll see that it promotes violence and disrespect according to, to some school boards, right? So when I see that, I see why it's a questionable book. I might look at the images of it, right? Because this has illustrations. And this cover is great. The cover is already, already kind of like an emoji, right? Because you have this person's head being opened up like an attic. And, and I realize that it's, it's been challenged because of disrespect and violence in it. There's also like a little kind of demon character here and here. Maybe that gives me an idea of how I might want to do an emoji for it, right? So maybe I want to do a head with, with the, the house coming out of it, but I want it to look a little unsettling too. I don't want it to be like a really happy emoji face. Maybe it's a little bit more introspective, a little bit more jarring. I don't know. That's up to you. Now, this would be really hard to just to start from scratch. And if we were doing this as an illustration project, which we'll be doing later, We'll sketch ideas out first. We'll get those sketches kind of reviewed by group members. We'll pick our best approach and then work from there. Here, this is just an exercise. We're going to do it very, very directly, not sketching, but using this site. So once you've picked your, your text, the light in the attic, I might grab an inspiration image of it. So this is the title poem and drag that into my folder for exercise two. You might look at a book cover to inspire you, or maybe you just know the, the, the book choice you're doing so well, you don't need any reference. But now I go back to the, the project, and I scroll down to step two, and click on this link, and it will take you to this flat icon designer, very simple interface, because vectors are, at their most basic form, just cutouts of flat colored shapes layered on top of each other. And this will allow you to make a custom emoji very quickly within limited options. So it's like paper dolls. So if compositing was like collaging with magazines, being able to add opacity and edge control and warp and all of that, this is more like cutting things out of construction paper. What I'm going to do is hit this randomizer button a few times and see some of the, the ranges of things I can create here. And then I'm just going to start at the, the base by clicking on the, the th delete option. The first thing I have to choose is my base shape. 
And they keep adding them. So they have like a variety of Santa ones now that they didn't have before. The vomit one is fairly new. Kind of interesting. But what you want to know about these base shapes is this you cannot edit. You can only layer on top of it. So if I want to do, you know, a children's head, a child's head, and I want to build kind of a house on top, unfortunately, I can't do this one with this one on top of it, right? Even though I know it's supposed to be a poop, but it can be something similar like a sketch for a roof. So I might choose this one because this at least gives me the illusion of something on top that I can build on top. And that's probably better than using something like this, which is like a robot, or any of these others that I see. I don't want to be limited to a cowboy hat. And this is just sketching. So now if I choose that as my base for my idea, now I can choose the eyes, right? And I want what look like kind of little child's eyes that are a little disturbing. So I probably don't want these really huge ones that make it look like a South Park character. And now for all of these, you can choose multiples. But you can't do anything with them. You can't move them around. You just have to take them as is. So to unselect them, you just click on them again. And I'm going to try these eyes. Or maybe these eyes. And then maybe add to those. I kind of like that. That looks kind of thoughtful or quizzical. Or maybe this. And you can go ahead and start exploring with this. Or maybe both, right? That could be the base of my, my attic. And this, come on. These can be my quizzical eyes. This will not be your final project. This is just a sketch for it to get you started. And that one might do everything I need it to do. So, so with some economy. I don't need that one anymore. I don't need this one anymore. Though I do like that tilt. So, What I'm saying is experiment within these limited options. Because it's, it's a new way of kind of compositing and playing with things available. Oh, I like those ones. Nope, still like this better. So it's like playing with paper dolls. Or I know we have gamers in the room. It's like customizing your character before you start playing the game, right? Except this is very limited customization. And you can try some of the, the other weird effects. Now I move on to mouths and faces. Now this is what you want to realize. Except for your base shape, you can layer eyes on top of mouths or mouths on top of eyes. It's always going to be the one you click last that shows up on top. Does that make sense? So it's like stacks of paper. It's a good way to think of vectors. So for the mouth, I just want to keep it really simple, childish and small, and keep everything kind of down at the bottom. So maybe something like that. And it's amazing how, how much a difference, like just the smallest change makes to something like an expression. when you're dealing with graphics. So I like that one. It has some nice subtlety to it. I can add, add you know, teeth, but not everything's going to work the same. Right? So I want the my emoji to look a little puzzled, like interested in their own thoughts, right? or what's going on with their head. And if I wanted to change my eyes, remember, Anything I do will now go on top of everything else. 
but I'm good. Now I can go to extras, right? 